Hello everyone, in this video, we are going to talk about our machine learning project, Cat Emotion Classification. Research shows that cats have human-like emotions. They can be happy, angry, curious, relaxed, and etc. Sometimes humans can tell their emotions, and thus we hypothesize that machine can also tell with the help of deep learning. So in this project, we try to build our own deep learning model to unfold the emotions of cats. This is the agenda for this presentation. We'll first walk you through the data pre-processing from scratch, then discuss our considerations in model construction. At the end, we'll examine the model performance and share our analysis based on that. This is an overview of our data pre-processing. Here is just to give you a rough idea of what we are doing, and I'll explain each step in details in later slides. As you can see from the bottom left, We've got 2,400 images as raw data. Then we remove the invalid images and invalid content on the images, and down to clean data with size 2,000. After we've got the clean data, we perform some sort of standardization to prepare for model chaining, and do data augmentation to better exploit the data we have. Finally, we cut all the data into a chaining set, a validation set, and a testing set. Our raw data comes from Google Image. We use the keyword happy cat, curious cat, angry cat, and relaxed cat to directly extract data from the web. So we get labeled images of four classes. Looking into these data, there are several potential issues. First, there may be irrelevant content on the images. Then we may encounter completely irrelevant images. We'll also find duplicated images as we scroll down. Here's how we clean the data. First, we manually remove the irrelevant images and irrelevant contents on these images. Then, inspired by Siamese network, we encode all the images by the norm of their pixel values and conduct an all pairs comparisons of these encoded values using the dictionary to detect duplicated images. Once duplicated images are detected, we manually remove them. The next step is image cropping. We first leverage a package called SmartCrop to conduct content-aware image cropping. As you can see from the example on the left, it automatically locates the face of the cat and crop the image to a squared one. Then we resize it to a standardized size, which is 150 pixels times 150 pixels. If the original size of the image is smaller than our target size, we'll we adjust the sharpness accordingly to better normalize the data. After the images are all set, we apply z-score normalization on chaining data and validation data. The goal is to avoid outlier issues and improve the stability and performance of deep learning models. The way we do it is first load all the pixel data into a range of 0 to 1. Then we do the z-score normalization using the mean and standard deviation derived from MNIST dataset. We are also aware that the data we obtain from Google Image is very limited. So we decide to perform data augmentation on a chaining set to increase the diversity of chaining data. As you can see from this example, in data augmentation, many image operations are randomly applied to the original image. It can be flipped, pad, crop, and etc. So here we use convolutional neural network because our model is a very classic image classification problem. And another major advantage is that the dependence from prior knowledge and human effort in feature design is very small in this neural network. Also, CNNs are very efficient in reducing the number of parameters without losing on the quality of models, and CNN were developed keeping images into consideration. There are some very important parameters in our convolutional neural network. The first one is the criterion, which decides the type of loss function. So here we chose cross-entropy loss function. And the second one is the optimizer, which decides our learning rate and the momentum. Momentum helps to accelerate gradient vector in the right directions.
and the third one is the scheduler. It decays the learning rate of each parameter group by gamma every step size approach. So here we chose step size equals to 7 and gamma equals to 0 0.1. The number of approaches is 35 in our model, which means that we are going to have 35 iterations. So after chose CNN, what we do is that we chose ResNet. So we hope to increase the number of layers in our CNN to better classify our data. However, we don't want to have degradation problem to decrease our accuracy. And we believe that ResNet can help us with this. The ResNet solves degradation problem while increasing the number of layers. And the idea of it is to learn the residue of an output instead of the original mapping. So from the picture, we can see that the input is x. So after the first layer, we will get fx. Instead of import fx to the next layer, what we do is to use fx minus x, which is the residue and then input it to the next layer. So before we start, we have some problems to deal with our data. And the most important one is the data size. The amount of data we obtained from Google image is highly limited. So we are thinking about what to do. And the method that we are going to use is transfer learning. It allows us to build accurate models in a time-saving way, and we believe that the transferable experience in emotion recognition across human and cat is doable. So we believe that there are some relationship between human emotion and cat emotion, and the knowledge we learned from uh, emotion recognition of human can be applied to our, our cat emotion classification model. So in this page, we want to more detailedly introduce transfer learning. And it is imitating human learning, which is that we learn something and when we acquire the knowledge, we can apply the knowledge to our next task. So the machine learning, it is a machine learning technique where a model chained on one task is pre-purposed on a second related task. And another idea of transfer learning is that transfer learning is the idea of overcoming the isolated learning paradigm and utilizing knowledge acquired for one task to solve the related ones. And this will help us solve our data limitation problem. So we have applied the transfer learning to our ResNet structure, which means that we are going to have a pre-trained model in our structure. And what we chose is the ImageNet, which is a very large data set with a thousand uh, classes. And what we do is first we have uh, two bases in the convolutional neural network, the convolutional base and the classifier, which is the fully connected layer. And what we do is to freeze our convolutional base, which means that the parameters we have learned from the ImageNet and we will apply them to our convolutional base. And in the classifier, instead of classified into a thousand classes, what we do is to classify them to four classes. From the codes here, we can see that the parameter that requires grade is equal to force, which means that we freeze the whole convolutional layer and stop them from updating parameters while chaining. So then that's the knowledge we have applied from ImageNet. We have applied the parameters learned from ImageNet to our model, and at the, just at the last base, the uh, fully connected base, we will do the classification in it into four classes. After implementation, we can see here we have two graphs. The first one is the chain loss and validation loss. And the second is the curve for chain accuracy and the validation accuracy. From these two graphs, we have a couple of observations. The first one is as chain accuracy increases, our validation accuracy does not experience obvious changes accordingly. It's a vibrating around a number. And second one is that we found the validation accuracy is stuck at around 50% after a push 3. And third one is our testing accuracy is 41.25%.
So based on the preliminary result, we have some interpretations. From our first observation, the chain accuracy increases while the validation accuracy does not change, obviously. We believe that the cause is that we have applied some sort of pre-processing on chaining set, but not on validation set. And the uh, solution is kind of simple, which is to apply the augmentation on both chaining and validation set in order to make both of these two sets on the same distribution. And the second observation is that our validation accuracy is stuck at around 50% after epoch 3. This is kind of tricky, and we believe that the reason is overfitting and we decide to apply the L2 regularization to avoid overfitting. In this page, we will more detailedly explain the L2 regularization. It adds a penalty on the different parameters of the model to reduce the freedom of the model. Hence, the model will be less likely to fit the noise of the training data and will improve the generalization abilities of the model which means that we have add a penalty equal to the sum of the square value of the coefficients to our loss function. And from the codes here, we can see the implementation using PyTorch is to add weight decay parameter to non-zero in optimizer. After the two changes we have made to our model, the first one is to add augmentation process to validation set, and the second one is to add L2 regularization to avoid overfitting. After these cha two changes, we have our final results. From the images, we can see that we also have the two images indicates chain loss and validation loss, and chain accuracy and validation accuracy. Based on these two results, we have some observations. The first one is our chaining accuracy grows smoothly and sufficiently close to 1 as more approaches. And second one is the validation accuracy increases until approach 10. In our preliminary results, our validation accuracy stuck at around 50 until approach 3. And the third observation is that both validation accuracy and test accuracy improves compared to first model. So at last, we have our test accuracy to 59%. We have a couple of conclusions to our model. Here are some important points that we want to re-mention again. The first important progress is our data pre-processing method, including data cleaning, content-aware cropping, data normalization, and data augmentation. And the second is that we have applied ResNet transfer learning L2 regularization to our model. And the result is that we have a 59% testing accuracy. That's all for our presentation. Thanks for watching.